to be joined by Labour's Shadow Chancellor, John McDonald. Wow. Um, very good to see you. Thanks Hello, for coming Rose. in. Um, I suppose the obvious place to start is the Prime Minister's warning. Do you think that if we leave the EU, you would, the government would have to cut health spending, cut defence spending, uh, well, see smaller reductions in, in pensions? Well, look, let me tell you where I'm coming from. Yeah. Because I, I'm fed up, I think I'm where most people are at at the moment in terms of I'm fed up of project fear on both sides. I think what's been happening is there have been exaggerated claims on both sides and that's turned people off. And most people, I think, come from my sort of position, which is I, I didn't vote to go into the con market. I'm sort of Eurosceptic. I want to be in Europe. But I don't like the institutions of the European Union. I want reform. I want change. I don't want to leap in the dark. I just want some security of how we're going forward. Now, all these exaggerated claims that have come forward are turning people off. And people say, you're not listening to our concerns. What are you going to do about addressing those concerns? So I think the... So just to be clear, because people will want to know, you know what your position is on this. You think the Prime Minister is wrong to make this claim I, I that, think that, that really important bits of public sector delivery, health, pensions, would be cut? It, it, is, tr it is true. You have to put the argument in a balanced way, otherwise people are going to turn off. It is true that there are risks to our economy, right. because our economy is fragile. I blame the Tories for it being so fragile. Uh, George Osborne has mismanaged our economy for seven years. It's extremely fragile. Withdrawal from the single market would have an impact. Some of the claims are exaggerated on both sides, but it would have an impact. And at this point in time, look at, I just look at my constituency. I don't want to lose jobs in my constituency. I don't want wages undercut, and I do not want anything putting people's pensions at risk and there could be that risk this is a big leap in the dark and those that are saying let's leave cannot predict the what will happen effectively as far as i'm concerned and i have listened to all the economists on all sides and the general view is this is a risk too far so just to be clear because you know i'm sorry to sort of slightly press you on this but you plainly don't dis don't agree with the prime minister on this. i agree that there is a risk I'm not with these specific cuts. Well, I think, I think there, there is a real risk in terms of employment overall. There's no doubt about that. I think there is a risk to the pound in the short term, and that will have consequences, no doubt about yeah. it. Now, so but those, turning that into lower pensions, look, health, that's where you disagree. Well, I think my problem is this as well. Let's yeah. wake up. Talking to Labour voters, and young mm. people in particular, after the referendum, if Brexit, Tory Brexit, go through, there will be a Conservative government in power. Boris Johnson will have a huge influence on that government. He may well be the Prime Minister in due course. Do people really think our public services are, are, are not going to be at risk as a result of that? There aren't going to be cuts, that they'll introduce further austerity, that employment rights will be savage, because that's what he's been campaigning on all these years. He'll have Nigel Farage yapping at his heels on those policies as well. I'm just saying that uh, this is a Tory Brexit. The risk will come from the Conservative Party still in government. And as a result of that, the economic leap in the dark will have huge consequences as a result of their policy decisions. I mean, you've described yourself as a sceptic. You've said that there are lots of things wrong with the European Union. How committed are you to the campaign to keep us in? Because some would say yeah. you don't come across as committed enough. OK, well, let's get absolutely clear. I'm campaigning for Remain. I'm campaigning for reform, and I think that's where the majority of British people are at the moment. We're not hugely Europhile. We, you know, we see Europe warts and all, but we want to be part of it. But also we're being realistic about what can be reformed. And I think we can create a reform agenda that is extremely positive. The problem is, I've been arguing that case for quite a while now, but it's been squeezed out of the media because of the punch-ups of the Tory party. But, but many people on your side fear that Labour voters are either going to vote for yeah. Brexit or just not going to bother at all. And one reason why they might behave in that way, and may already be behaving in that way in terms of postal votes, is you are plainly much more excited about trying to get the Tories out than you no, are about no. keeping us no, in no, Europe. That's and, not and, the and, case. And, no. and on that basis, no. you know, no. Labour voters may well think, well, why bother to vote? No, there's a, I think there's a risk to, to our country and our economy from both the Conservatives and from leaving the EU. That's my concern. There's a double risk. But what's more important, going with the Tories or staying right. in the it's, EU? It's both. It's both. But you won't make a choice. Because because the it's Prime Minister has actually said, he said on this programme, that, that he thought the vote to stay in was more important than the, the Tories What I'm saying power. is, if we come out whilst the Tories are in power, I think it would be disastrous for working people. That's the worst I, I, I fear. I think the most important thing is to remain in at the moment to ensure that we can get the reforms that we need. But that needs a Labour government.
government as well, to be frank. And if you, if people vote for Tory Brexit, it will reinforce the right wing within the Conservative Party. And I think we will suffer badly with austerity, austerity politics. In addition to that, the economic consequences of leaving will have a huge knock-on effect on all the public services that we have, but particularly on employment rights as well. So I want to stay within, but I want it to be Labour voices now in this next 10 days to save this campaign. Because up until now, all we've heard is Conservatives fighting amongst themselves who seem more interested in who's the leader of the Tory party than they are about the future of our country. Now, obviously, for other reasons, but when you say that the European Union needs to be mended, it should be less run in the interests of, you know, the, the elite that you think are lining their pockets, you sound quite a lot like Boris Johnson, who's on the other side of the fence. Yes, but he and so again, yeah. I, I sort of put it to you, why, why should people vote for a European Union which, in your own words, isn't working for working people at the moment? Because in many ways it is working for working people. We wouldn't have had the employment rights that we've got if it wasn't for the European Union, because the Tories would have cut them, they wouldn't have introduced them. But in addition to that, it does secure employment, because we've got that huge single market. And if we withdraw from that, and then we start going into individual trade deals, I know who'll be negotiating those trade deals. It will be Boris Johnson and the right wing, the Tory party. Do you think they're going to be interested in employment rights? Do you think they're going to be interested in the long term future of working people? Of course they're not. So staying within the single market is absolutely critical. But I'm being realistic. People out there want reform and that's what we've got to campaign on. Now it's interesting, for the first time in a generation, right the way across Europe now, there are socialist and social democratic parties and others who are on the same agenda as us, want to stay within Europe, but they want to see reform in the European Union. That's a real opportunity for us, a positive agenda for creating full employment right the way across Europe, protecting public services, investing in the long term, making the European Union more democratic, holding our own politicians who go to Europe for meetings as well more accountable. So there's a really positive agenda that we can campaign on that's been squeezed out of this campaign as a result of all these fights within the Tory party. Um, on immigration, there are lots of Labour voters who are worried about immigration. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn, again, on this programme, made a very powerful case for why immigration is good for the country. Lots of your voters don't believe that, though. No, I think, I think they're coming at it realistically as well, which is saying, look, if you are going to have free movement of labour, you've got to put the infrastructure in place to ensure that that's supported. And that's what's so, not so happening. So you are completely against any kind of control? Well, I think the benefits of migration for us as, a country, as, as Brits, travelling all over Europe, taking the opportunity to study, to work, to settle, we don't want to deny our, the free movement of labour benefits that we have and therefore if we if we have to have free movement of labour let's put the infrastructure in place to enable us to get the best benefits from that and that infrastructure means making sure that there's planned expenditure and investment some of it coming from the European Union on our pub, to support our public services but also the infrastructure in terms of legal protections for workers as well so we don't have this undercutting of wages. And very quickly um, one of the reasons some people think leave are currently doing better is because on their side there is a simple message which is being put out by the, the admittedly smaller number of Labour MPs on that side than on your side, but the Labour MPs, the uh, UKIP representatives, the Tories. Um, it's a simple message and they're all pulling in the same direction. You constantly attack the government, even when selling yeah. um, the uh, EU message, as it were. You won't share a platform with George Osborne or uh, the Prime Minister. Mm. Isn't it time, though, you put those differences aside no, and, 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 no. and share the platform? Let's be clear. They want a different Europe from the Europe that I want. We're going to be talking in the next 10 days to Labour voters and particularly to young people to say this is the Europe we want. It's a positive agenda. It is about protection of workers' rights. It's about full employment. It's about developing our public services. It's about investing for the long term. And at the same time, we are, this isn't Project Fear, we are warning them what Tory Brexit will mean if Boris Johnson and his friends and Nigel Farage yapping at his heels takes over. And that will mean a savage attack on workers' rights privatisation of our public services and the undermining, I believe, the long-term future of our economy. That isn't project fear, that's a, an assessment, objective assessment from our view. Uh, thank you. So don't go away because there'll be more from Shadow Chancellor John McDonnell after the break. Welcome back to Peston on Sunday. Well, we super, super glued him down, so John McDonnell is still with me. But first, Allegra and wisdom, let's hope, 
from the big screen. <laughs> so first of all on Twitter, the wisdom of Harry Smith, who is pleased with your interview, John McDonnell, saying that you've hit the nail on the head because you're pointing out the nature of a Tory Brexit and how it would destroy social services. Actually something the Prime Minister has been saying today, but I am afraid elsewhere there are people who think that your uh, desire to attack the Tories is uh, not helping their campaign. You've got Stig Abel here. It's almost as if senior Labour figures actually back Brexit but are pretending not to, something I'm sure Robert will return to, and Siobhan Benita, who was an independent that ran for mayor, who also thinks, and she's not uh, conservative or she is an independent, mm. and she thinks that you are not putting party politics aside. But we thought we would also dig a bit deeper into the scale of John McDonnell's task as Shadow Chancellor and look what the Google shrink is telling us about what people worry about when they Google Labour and the economy. This is what they are looking for. He's just shifted in his seat. <laughs> Since the last election, these are the top 10 searches and you can see or you may not be able to, but the top six suggest people do still think Labour screwed up the economy. But then I'm going to go in on the top three and look at this one. Number two is, did Labour really leave a note. So that note, if you don't remember, was left by Liam Byrne, then Chief Secretary of the Treasury. Uh, he left it for his Conservative successor to find and it said there's no money left. Despite a massive change in leadership and direction, people are still obsessing with Labour's past economic failures. Robert. Well, the great news is that John McDonnell has told me he will decorate a cupcake for us. <laughs> <laughs> we'll show that for you <laughs> on wonderful social media later. Um, on this issue of rebuilding economic mm. credibility, how long is it going to take you? Well, it's a mountain to climb, definitely, from all the polling evidence and also on the doorstep evidence. People, the people tell us we lost the last election because of lack of economic credibility. It's going to take us a while, and slowly but surely we're doing it. Put, I'm putting the foundations in place at the moment, which is trying to put the architecture so that we get the best economic advice we possibly can. I've set up this Economic Advisory Council, which includes Nobel laureate Joseph Stiglitz, out of the economist world and the renowned Mariana Mazzucato, a whole range of people who really can give us good advice. Beside them, I've got reviews of all our financial institutions, all the instruments that we'll use when we go back into government. But I want to raise the level of economic debate overall. So I've got them touring around the country, speaking at meetings, lectures, seminars. And what's interesting is those, those meetings have been packed out with people just coming off the street, students, young people, economists, yes, business people, trade unions. So we're raising the level of debate, listening to people's ideas. And slowly but surely over this next 18 months, you'll see us putting in place not just the architecture for giving us the best advice, but also the trajectory of our economic policy making and the individual policies. Um, now, you've said today that you think there's a strong case for Sir Philip Green, the billionaire owner mm. of Topshop, to lose his uh, knighthood over what happened to BHS and in particular its uh, pension fund, uh, both during his ownership and then after he sold it. But in terms of rebuilding credibility, shouldn't you really have waited for the Select Committee report on all this before, yeah. as I say, making this uh, intervention? I've said if he doesn't turn up to the committee and he doesn't participate, he should have it withdrawn. I don't think these honours should be awarded to people if they don't participate and support the democratic process. That's what I've said. I'm really shocked. But aren't you, jumping the, aren't you jumping the gun a bit? No, I said it's a conditional. He's got to cooperate. And if he doesn't cooperate, he shouldn't be honoured in that way. He should have it withdrawn. I'm really shocked at what's gone on. My mum worked for BHS behind the counter for 30 years. God rest her soul. She retired. Um, she's no longer with us. She retired. She had a, a nice little pension, which she saved from. I was amazed at that. But she, she just worked hard. It was a good company. They invested for the long term. They developed new products. They treated their staff well. All that has been shattered. Why? Well, actually, because people have come in, in the, it's happened right the way across our uh, in sectors of our economy, more interested in short-term profiteering for their own benefit than for the long-term investment and the, the, of that company, the staff, and also our country. I don't think that's acceptable. The culture that caused the crisis in banking is actually in sections of our other sectors of our economy as well, and we've got to tackle it. And what I meet, I meet, I meet people in my constituency, small firms and all the rest of it, they're under the cosh from some of these robber baron buccaneers who are short-term profiteering, and they're then under the co cosh to p cut their costs, and they don't pay their bills in time, that sort of thing. It's that, distorting our economy. No, we haven't got a lot of time. It's a t and this is a period of extraordinary political events. We've got the Chilcot uh, report into why we went to war in Iraq and what happened subsequently coming up yeah. not too long. Um, many of your MPs believe that 
on publication, your friend, the leader of the Labour Party, Jeremy Corbyn, is likely to call for Tony Blair, the previous leader of the Labour Party, to be prosecuted as a war criminal. Do you think that should happen? No, we'll see what comes out of Chilcot. We're well, not ruling out well, well, the Labour Party completely disowning its previous leader and saying there's a case for him to be prosecuted well, as a war criminal. I think, look, I want to be fair about this. I want to see what comes out of Chilcot. Um, I think, actually, for me, leave aside Tony Blair, the more important thing is learning the lessons of how we got into that mess. I didn't vote for the Iraq war. I didn't believe what we were being told at the time and the consequences of it, half a million people being killed and the Middle East being in turmoil ever since. Let's learn the lessons of what went wrong and never ever let this happen again. I mean, it is somewhat extraordinary though, maybe to tell you something about the splits in the Labour Party, that your most successful leader ever in terms of winning elections could be yeah. disowned by the party to that extent. We'll see what comes out of Chilcot. Here's the tragedy. I think Tony Blair is almost a Shakespearean tragic figure. I, I have nothing but praise for him for what he did in terms of Northern Ireland and the peace process. I just thought it was heroic. Actually, John Major as well, to give him his due. I thought that was heroic. If he'd have stopped there, he would have gone down in history as a peacemaker. Then he allows Iraq to happen. And I think it's completely destroyed his reputation. If he'd have left it at Northern Ireland, I would have been one of the first people to praise his administration in terms of what they did. Now, unfortunately, we've got to uh, wrap up. Uh, you're a famous Republican. Have you got a, a message? You're doing a cupcake. You've got a message for the Queen on her? Yes, happy birthday. I, I've, been attending fates. <laughs> I've been attending fates all day yesterday. And I was with a group of school children in my constituency who did a thing in celebration of the Queen, the 90s, and they did a dancers from each of the decades right and when it got to the 60s and 70s i began to recognize some of the haircuts and some of the so clothes. even as a republican you can oh, see there yeah. are good yeah. things about the queen well. very good now back to allegra <laughs> I hope the Queen watches on catch up. So, look, really good news, John McDonnell. Mick Hucknall, who was blisteringly rude about you lot this week, has actually said, I agree with John. Um, he's been watching this morning, even though he's on tour in Ireland. Staying in the EU is the only way to enable reform, and it's okay to distance Labour from the Tories. But then, less good news, but you probably don't care. Vote leave here, picking up on the fact that you have said you don't like the institutions of the EU. This is a particularly Labour yeah. brand of uh, being pro European. Mick Hucknall now, did call what's that? Back. Mick Hucknall did call his band simply red indeed right okay now um, uh, after that bombshell you may be feeling a bit graft out in this referendum that is certainly how my former colleague philip sims over at the bbc feels he wrote, did this with biro one day this week and it kind of summed out how i'm feeling too robert i'm going to give you right. Uh, some paper and a pen. Right. You've got to do one, oh, and I'm going to show you mine. My hunch oh. is that the Euro I football Championship could distract people. Uh, it could mean that they uh, get too excited, they drink too much Pims beer, uh, coal, uh, the, buy barbecue coal in droves and that means they're distracted and the people who vote are this Eurosceptic enthusiast and that could trigger a Brexit vote. That is my theory. Robert, we'll do you one later. Um, you guys do one at home, send it in, I'll stick them on air maybe later and I'll retweet them. But now for a real graph and I think I think it's this icon here. So, at the beginning of the referendum, when it was called in February, YouGov had a fifth of voters undecided. That has now fallen to about a tenth. Um, some four million of you still making your mind up. The Remain camp hope that eventually they stick with the status quo. And pollster Peter Kellner says the historical evidence is on their side. He's looked at loads of referendums in the past and he shows that at this stage in a campaign, two weeks before polling day, the polls often swing to the status quo. I'm going to show you that. So this is quite complicated, but essentially this is how many people are backing the status quo. And you can see in 1997 Welsh devolution, a big pickup for the status quo as it goes in. Actually, that was a huge 16-point swing back into the status quo in the final three weeks. And then if we do that swipey thing, you can also see 2014 Scottish referendum. Again, a tick up for the status quo towards the end. Uh, Remain is relying on this. And this is also why the Leave camp focus on the risks of staying in the EU. They want to drive through the idea that voting for the status quo isn't an option. Robert.